for the longest time I've been trying to match the picture quality of my Plasma TV with the LG C1 while using black frame insertion OLED Motion Pro High and I think I finally did it and I'm gonna share with you the settings so why would I want to do that <laughs> because the Plasma TV at 60 Hertz 60 FPS looks better <laughs> it's that simple for gaming because the motion clarity is far superior so it doesn't matter that the OLED has a much better gray to gray so the responsiveness of the pixels are just much much better far superior than the plasma but the problem is that motion clarity is limited by persistence so this monitor companies they are trying to brainwash people that you know input lag that's all that matters input lag input lag and so some people believe that that one millisecond that they throw on the box that's what tells you everything you need to know about the monitor for gaming and they some people think that that has to do with motion clarity and that's going to give you perfect motion clarity and it will not so motion clarity based on the blur busters law is limited by persistence the pixel visibility time so what is the persistence of the plasma tv four milliseconds how do I know that? Very simple. You open the UFO test and you reduce the speed of the UFO test to 240 pixels per second. Okay? And you will see that that looks perfectly clear. It looks like one pixel of motion blur, which is considered perfectly clear. So then you divide one 200 and between 240 you multiply that by 1000 you get 4 milliseconds that's 4 milliseconds of persistence so now the plasma tv does have other limitations such as gray to gray and when you go past beyond 240 pixels per second the motion on the plasma tv breaks really bad okay so when you move the camera very very fast it is not as good so it is not going to look as 240 fps or it's not going to look as a 240 hertz gaming monitor okay but when you pan the camera slowly it actually does look like a 240 hertz gaming monitor so what about the LG C1 which is super fast input lag and gray to gray which is two different things so input lag is one thing gray to gray and the responsiveness of the pixels is something different and MPRT or persistence is what gives you the motion clarity and that's a, another thing okay so the LG C1 is a sample and hold display and at 60 Hertz 60 FPS as a sample and hold display you would need to reduce the speed of the UFO test to 60 pixels per second which you cannot do by the way you need to edit the website which I show how to do in a previous video so you can change the speed to whatever you want to actually test that so that's that speed is so slow that it's not even available by default but that's the speed you would need to use to get one pixel of motion blur okay so but when you use all emotion pro high what happens is that the pixel visibility time the persistence is reduced to th in 38 percent based on my testing so what happens on the lgc1 with all emotion pro high is that it draws the picture left to right top to bottom and once it has 38 percent of the screen draw like this it's going to scroll that down and the rest is black and scroll that down and the rest is black and by reducing the persistence by reducing the pixel visibility time it is improving the motion clarity okay so it is very simple at 60 hertz what is the persistence a sample and hold persistence is 16.6 .6 milliseconds you calculate what is 38 percent of that and that is going to tell you the motion clarity okay so it is basically equivalent of 158 fps like so the plasma tv is like 240 fps like based on persistence and the lgc1 at 60 with all motion pro high is like 158 like so what happens is that 
at 240 pixels per second, the plasma looks better. But once you go faster than that, let's say 360 or 480 pixels per second, actually the OLED looks better because it has a better responsiveness. The gray to gray is better. So the motion on the OLED also looks cleaner. So I would call that a very close, a very close matchup, but the OLED is actually better with OLED Motion Pro High. So now the problem is you lose brightness. So even if you use OLED Motion Pro High and you unleash the full screen brightness power of your LG C1 OLED, you still have the challenge near black because you are going to lose brightness. How much brightness are we are you are you going to lose with OLED Motion Pro High? Well, it's very simple. If the pixel visibility time is reduced to 38%, you're basically losing 62% brightness based on the tailbot plateaus law. So the tailbot plateaus law tells you that you basically get the average brightness in time. So what you're doing basically is you are adding this amount of brightness time, you're adding that plus zero, 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 and dividing that by the amount of time. So it's very simple. 62% brightness loss with OLED Motion Pro High. So that brightness loss goes to everything, near black, full screen brightness and everything. So how am I fixing that situation using reshade on the PC? So I'm going to show you the preset that I am using, how I figured that out because I am using a near black test pattern to figure that out. That was not me just going up and down and playing around with the settings, okay? There's nothing wrong with doing that. I do that all the time, but every time I can use a near black test pattern or a white clipping pattern or a color clipping pattern, I much rather do that because you get better results. So let me turn off the lights to show you how this look and hopefully the camera is lowering the ISO so you can see, I mean increasing the ISO so you can see this near black and you see that it looks fantastic near black. So I can see everything. See here on the OLED? It, everything is visible. So the OLED is at top, the plasma is here at the bottom. You see, it actually looks perfect. <laughs> like, it looks like there is no black frame insertion whatsoever. <laughs> it looks just absolutely amazing. So I'm going to show you all the TV settings and the reshade settings. Let me go to the outside for a moment to show you the brighter areas. So you see that it also looks good, the colors look good, and hopefully the camera changes the ISO. So you can see that. And actually, in terms of brightness, the C1 with these settings is a little bit brighter when we have a lot of white on the screen, like on this shot. But the plasma is brighter sometimes if, if, if there is less white on the screen. The plasma it is brighter. So I, I would say they are neck and neck, very, very, very close in brightness. This is, <laughs> this is just almost the same. Man. Like I, I cannot get it closer than this, <laughs> at least not without instruments and, you know, calibration and other stuff. So yeah, you can see near black is absolutely perfect. So let me show you the settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera on my hand so I can actually show you the preset I am using because it is very small so you're not gonna be able to see that so what I'm using here is a preset called well, you can see it there PROD8003 curved levels and these are the settings the only thing that I changed here was the toe position X and the toe position Y to 0 0.03 and 0 0.05. And how I figured this out with a near black test pattern. So what I did is I figured out a way to enter a near black test pattern in game. You can see here, this is an SDR near black test pattern. I am on SDR right now and I am using 
module HDR on on the service menu. Link in the description of this video to my previous video where I show you how to do that. So you see this near black test pattern. So basically I just made sure that I was able to see that near black test pattern. So you see on the plasma TV, it is crushing this last two. I can actually increase it more so you can see it on the plasma TV, but it's not worth it. I am just calibrating for the LGC one. And you see the near the plasma TV near black looks a little bit noisier. I mean, it doesn't look like this in front of me. Okay, this is exaggerated. I mean, this is an exaggeration. In front of me looks, it doesn't look that washed out. It looks like this. Let me see. It looks like this in front of me, okay? But I just increasing that ISO so you can see the entire near black test pattern. But the Plasma TV does look a little bit noisy near black. So let me lower the gain and still show you how it looks. I mean, the camera cannot capture that, but it doesn't look like that in front of me. It looks like this, see? It's not that unstable. That noise you see is more from the camera. But anyway, let me show you the TV settings I am using to get this. So we come here, all settings. So I have module HDR on or on the service menu and I have SDR, so just keep the contrast in 85. I can increase it, but I don't see that to be necessary. It is bright enough, but we can even increase this contrast. Uh, I think 97 is the maximum value. I would need to test that again. So increasing the contrast is going to clip the colors and clip the whites, so it gives you more brightness, but you cannot do too much because then is going to clip, you know, it's not going to be a better looking picture. But you can actually increase them more. I would need to test it again. I forgot what was the value, but this is enough to match the plasma. So just change the gamma to 2.2. And for the colors to match the eye candy with the plasma, I am using native color gamut. And I am unlocking this native color gamut with using the color control app because LG for some reason is locking this setting. So the reason why I change it to native color gamut is because when you lose brightness and you are increasing, so basically you are pushing brightness on the service menu, you are washing out the colors a little bit just by pushing that amount of brightness on SDR. You're just diluting the colors a little bit and then on top of that, you use black from insertion, you're also losing a little bit of color. So if I do not use black from insertion, I would keep this on auto and color depth 55, and it's gonna look like the Plasma TV. But when I use black from insertion, then I have to do this to match the color. So I keep that color saturation. So I use that 50 color gamut native, and this is the closest I've ever been to the Plasma TV look. It looks almost the same. You see, all the Motion Pro high. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. Let me make sure now that I have the camera in front of me that you can actually see everything. Yeah, you can see it. So in front of me it doesn't look that bright. Let me adjust that manually. I would say in front of me, it looks like this. And then if I go to, to the brighter area, it's going to clip the whites. So that's the thing. When you record the screen, you either adjust for the highlights and then you crush blacks or you adjust for the near black and then you crush the highlights and then you blown out the highlights. Basically, <laughs> it's very difficult to record this stuff. That's it. LG C1 and my Panasonic Plasma looking almost the same. And actually when I measure the peak brightness, the Plasma is measuring a higher peak brightness, very like 30, 40 on a number. Basically I am using a cell phone app that gives me a number 
it is not accurate, but it's the sensor of the phone measuring and giving me a number. And then I compare that number with the LG C1 and that's not even in nits. It's on a different unit of measurement. And it's like a 20 or 30 different difference. But that is on a small window. So if I have more white on the screen, so if I look at the sun like this, if I look at the sun and most of the screen is white, then the Plasma TV is dimmer than the C1 with these settings. So if I do this, most of the screen is white, then the Plasma TV is dimmer than the C1. You see? C1 looks a little bit brighter on the Plasma TV. Okay, well, let me know your thoughts and opinions if you tried these settings on a PC and if you have any questions. Again, all it Plasma. Very, 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 very close. Of course, the black levels on the LG C1 are so much better. It's not even close. And the motion clarity is also better at 60, let alone 100 or 120 with black from insertion. It's just absolutely amazing.